Welcome to part 10 in our Philippians series. The title of today's message is Shine Like Stars in the Sky. Shine Like Stars in the Sky. Now, I'm here in Putney, so the night sky isn't maybe as dark as some other places, but I can still see the stars. And uh, if you go into the countryside, as you know, the stars become much more visible as you go into the darkness and there's less light pollution. And the point of this message today is this, love the gospel or the word of life, love the gospel to shine in darkness. If we are going to shine in this dark world, the Bible talks about this world being fallen, that everybody needs to be saved and they can be saved through Jesus. This world is painted as being a dark place. Jesus is called the light of the world. The light, it says in John, shines in the darkness. If we are going to shine like stars in the sky, we must love the word of life. We must love the gospel, we must love it, believe it, but also live it so that we stand out like, like stars. Now the church, I think you'll agree with me, is meant to shine like stars in the sky. But the church often doesn't have a light pollution problem, as in the, the world is so beautiful and so light that the it's eclipsing the, the, the church, no, the, the church has a dark pollution problem in that they too often, we too often as Christians are too so, so like the dark world that we become like dark stars. We don't stand out. Our joy, our faith, our lifestyle, our praying, trust, our message, isn't clear. So we don't stand out like lights, we become like dark stars. Whereas the word of life, as Paul is going to say in our reading today, or the gospel, is like fuel that powers those stars. It's like fuel that powers us and makes us bright. The gospel is also like detergent that cleanses us, cleans us so that our lifestyle is bright. For Jesus. So we're going to be looking at Philippians 2, 12 to 18 today. And um, I'm going to be reading sections as we go along, but you might want to get a Bible so you can follow along today. But my first point I want to make is that there is a danger that we don't shine like stars in the sky, that we don't hold on to the word of life, so that we are dark stars. In our reading today, it says later, we're going to see, it says, So you may become blameless and pure, children of God, without fault, in a warped and crooked generation. Then, only if we become these things, blameless and pure, children of God, without fault, then we will shine like stars, as you hold firmly. These things are not automatic, are they? As you, will we? hold firmly? Will we, will we trust Jesus? Will we believe the gospel? Will we live holy lives? Will, will we be bold and, and boast in the gospel or the message of Jesus Christ? Or will we keep silent? Jesus says this in Matthew 5, 16, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Now those good deeds are our lifestyle. They're the overflow of knowing God. Our loving lives, our holy lives, our good lives, the way we do life in all the various facets, the way we work, the way we do family, the way we do friendships, the way we do singleness, the way we do sex, sex and sexuality and our entire view of life, the whole of life is to be good. And so be like a light in a dark place. 
So let's look. How can we shine like stars in the sky? It says in Philippians 2, 12 to 13, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. We are to work out our salvation. If we, don't, if we do work out our salvation, whatever that means, we shine like stars in the sky. Well, that means obedience to Jesus. That means reading what Jesus teaches. That means reading the whole Bible, reading the New T Old Testament, the New Testament, reading all of it through the lens of knowing Jesus. We're to obey. Work out your salvation means to, now I'm saved, work out. What does that mean, to obey? Uh, a few weeks ago, we talked about love, abounding with knowledge and depth of insight so that you may approve and discern what is best. Obedience. If we obey Jesus, we shine like stars in the universe. We're to live like those citizens that we looked at. We are to be like citizens of heaven. We're to imitate Jesus like we looked last week. The God who humbled himself, became a man, humbled himself further by being a servant, by dying on the cross. And we are not to be selfishly ambitious and conceited, as we saw, but rather we are to serve like Jesus with humility, loving humility, laying our lives down for others. Then we shine like stars in the universe as we work out that salvation. Live what it means to know Jesus. Now, let's remember that Paul has says here, work, um, not only in my presence, work out your salvation, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence. Now, he's in prison. He's in Rome. They're in Macedonia, in Philippi. Now, it's in some ways easy, isn't it, to obey when someone's there telling you what to do. Many people get personal trainers. If you've got the money, you can pay for someone to tell you to do press-ups, tell you to get, get on that uh, spinning bicycle, tell you to do your burpees or whatever exercise. They can urge you on, spur you on. Leaders doing that. But we haven't always got Christians around us as close as we would want. Like at the moment in this lockdown and church is not meeting as it normally does. But we're not as close to leaders. We're not as close to our brothers and sisters. There can be times like that where someone's not looking over our shoulder. We're not being inspired by someone's presence. We need to learn to serve Jesus, to love the gospel when no one else is watching. What do you do when no one else is watching? Are we working out our salvation? Are we holding on to the word of life? Are we believing God? Are we praying in secret? What you do in secret reveals what you really are. So we're to work out our salvation if we are to shine like stars in the universe. If we are to shine like stars in the universe, working out our salvation means to trust God in discouraging times. They're in, the Philippians are in a difficult season. They've got people opposing them. Not only that, their dear friend and leader, Paul, is in prison. These are all discouraging things. We must hold firm to the word of life, to the gospel, to the love of God, even when it's really hard. Because it's in that dark place that we shine. Because many other people are also struggling and suffering around us. It's not that we don't have grief and we're not sad, but we have a deep joy and trust and deep rejoicing even in those dark times. So if we're to shine like stars in the universe, we must trust God even 
in dark times. Hold firm to God's love. Paul says in Romans 8, 28, 29, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. You know, it says there, God is at work in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. We shine as we trust that God is at work. Even in this dark time, we know that God is working all things together for God for the purpose of making us more like Jesus, conforming us to his image. Do we trust in these difficult circumstances, in the difficult circumstances, whatever circumstances you are in right now, that God is at work in you to willing to act according to his good purpose to make you more like Jesus. If we are holding firm, trusting God, trusting his love, we shine like stars in the universe. Let's carry on with our reading. Philippians 2, 14 to 15. Do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may, may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation then you will shine like stars in the sky or stars in the universe shine like lights in the world you know the alternative to trusting God is grumbling and complaining. Grumbling and complaining is to accuse God of not being good, not being powerful, not existing, not keeping his word, being unfaithful. Grumbling and complaining. Those who grumble and complain and accuse God do not shine. They become black stars, dark stars. They don't stand out. Now, this grumbling, com complaining reference is, a, is referring back to Israel after they came out of Egypt by great miracles. They went into the wilderness, into the desert, and on many occasions they grumbled and complained. And it led to them, the wilderness, wandering for 40 years in the desert. And we're to think back to that. We're to be warned by that. We're to be encouraged not to be grumblers and complainers, those who accuse God. In 1 Corinthians 10, 6 to 11, it says, Now these things occurred as examples to keep us from setting our hearts on evil things as they did. That's Israel in the desert. Do not be idolaters as some of them were. As it is written, the people sat down to eat, to drink, got up to indulge in revelry. We should not commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 of them died. We should not test Christ as some of them did and were killed by snakes. Do not grumble as some of them did and were killed by the destroying angel. These things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us on whom the culmination of the ages has come. We must not accuse God, slander God in our hearts. We must trust God. It says here we must be blameless and pure children of God in this crooked and depraved generation. We should be blameless. Blameless. That's our external behaviour. Our external behaviour should reflect the character of Jesus. His love, his holiness, his purity, his devotion to God. We should be blameless, blameless rather than grumbling and complaining. 
It says here that we should be pure, blameless and pure children of God. That's to do with our inner motivations. Our inner, in, inwardly, we should be doing things for the love of Jesus, for the love of God. Not for selfish ambition and vain conceit. We're to be blameless and pure, children of God without fault. That's unblemished, refusing sin, refusing disunity. You see, if we are blameless and pure without fault in this world, you see, we shine like stars in the universe because we are contrasted to them. Grumbling and arguing stem from impure motives. I'm not sure that God is good. Grumbling and complaining lead to our fading light. We defame God by our conduct. Children of God. Blameless and pure children of God. See, children of God, we're meant, we're meant to have the family likeness of Jesus Christ, who was holy, who was loving, who, who had zeal for God, who was prayerful devoted to the kingdom of God. We're to be children of God, the family likeness of our Father and of the Son, Jesus Christ. Our behaviour marks us out as children of God. If we're Christians, we have been born again of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is at work in us, transforming us. So all Christians are to bear the likeness and increasingly bear the likeness of Jesus Christ. And it, the, all of that, blameless, pure, children of God, is in the context of a warped generation. That's like darkness. Our inner purity and outward conduct being blameless is like stars in a dark setting of space. Moving on to Philippians 2, 15 to 18. I'm going to reread the end of chapter uh, verse 15. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. As you hold firmly to the word of life. See the link there. You will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. Then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labour in vain, but even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the service, sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice with me. I can't cover all of that today. It says, then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. And that's a reference to da Daniel 12, 3, which says, those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens. Those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Those who are wise or rather walk according to God's word, his word of life or the gospel. Those who imitate Jesus, those who are wise shine like stars in the sky because we are contrasted to this dark world. Lead many to righteousness. Those who lead many to righteousness, we're to be those who speak of the gospel and lead many to Jesus. Christians and the church, by their faith, by their lifestyle, are like lights in this dark world but it's only as you hold firmly to the word of life or hold firmly to the gospel the word of life the word that gives life this firstly means to hold fast keep believing the word of life the gospel message keep believing that god loved me so much that he left heaven became a man, humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, becoming a servant, becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Now exalted to the highest place, I'm gonna keep serving Jesus, the one who saved me, the one who loves me, I'm gonna hold fast to this. No matter how dark it is, no matter how difficult it is, I'm gonna hold fast to this word of truth and as I do so, I shine like a star in the universe. Secondly, it means to hold out the word of life. 
as you hold out, we're to hold out the gospel message. We're not just to believe it, but we're also to offer it to others. It says in uh, chapter 1, verse 14, Because of my chains, says Paul, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. The Father wants to brighten us up, to declare the gospel, to speak the gospel, to share the gospel, to gossip the gospel without fear. May God, may God reduce our fear. May God reduce, uh, increase our courage by the power of the Holy Spirit so that as we hold firm to it and as we hold out the word of life, we will increasingly shine like stars in the universe. And this world needs you and me and the church to shine brighter and brighter. Love the gospel to shine in darkness. That's my, the message today. Love the gospel, the word of life, to shine in darkness. You will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. Let's hold firmly to the word of life. Now, hold firmly, hold firmly. It's, this is an active idea. This is a strong idea. Hold firmly. If I was hanging off the edge of a cliff, hold firmly to the edge of that cliff. As I walk to the, 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 the side of a road with a small child, I hold firmly to that child's hand. So many ways, we hold firmly to things. This is not, sometimes I go to church, you know, I have faith, sometimes I go to, sometimes I say a prayer. Every now and then, you know, I have faith. I'm not really involved in church or, or institutional religion or anything like that, but you know, I have faith. Hold firmly to the word of life. Strong term. Let's love the gospel. Let's live the gospel. Remembering the cross. Thanking God for the cross. Sharing the message of the cross. I read this morning and, uh, and it was a timely thing. I thought God wants to inspire us from the parable of the soils. And there's a few phrases in there that really stood out to me. There are four soils in the parable of parable of the soils or the parable of the sower. The sower goes out sowing seed and that seed is the message of the word of God or the message of the kingdom. We could say the word, the message of the gospel, the message of the word of life that we're to hold firmly to. And there's the firstly is the path that Jesus says in Luke 8, 12, those along the path are the ones who hear and then the devil comes, takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. And I encourage you today, if you have not believed, you are not saved. If you've not believed in Jesus, you are not saved. If you've not believed he has died on the cross for your sins, you are not saved. The devil wants, wants you to keep you from believing. I encourage you today, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He died for you for your sins. Ask him to forgive you, to come into your life as Lord and Saviour and you will be saved. Don't allow this seed today to be stolen from you. But if you have received this message, there are further warnings. There's the seed that fell among on the rocky soil. He says this, they believe for a while. Now you may still be believing for a while, but in time, of testing, they fall away. And this is such a time for the Philippians. Hold fast to the word of life. Then you will shine like stars in the universe. Let's not let go of the gospel message because of testing and trial. Then there's the seed that fell among thorns. And this is particularly, I felt, struck me today. They are choked by life's worries. So we can hold, we believe the gospel, the love of God, the word of life, until worries come. And then we think, oh, maybe it's not true after all. Because of worries, riches, and pleasures, it's choked 
because of worries, riches and pleasures. And they do not mature. Are you holding firm to the word of life? Or are you holding firm to pleasures? Now I don't really know what those pleasures are, but may the Holy Spirit convict us of where we are putting other things, making other things our idols. You know, you can make Netflix your idol. You can make computer games your idol. You can make work your idol. You can make relationships your idol. You can make anything, your pleasure, your idol. And, and it can cause you to move away from holding firmly to the word of life. Are you allowing pleasures to distract you? And there are so many pleasures. So many entertainment distractions which are vacuous and empty and don't help you to hold firmly to the word of life. Will you listen to Jesus, his loving warning, his encouragement today to hold firmly to the word of life? Will you allow thorns, worries, riches, and pleasures to steal and so you don't shine like a star in the universe and finally there's the good soil and may we all be this the good a noble heart who hear who hear the word retain it by persevering produce a crop may we be those who have noble hearts today May we have a noble heart that holds firmly to the word of life. Love it, learn it, study it, come to know Jesus, our greatest interest. You will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. Love the gospel to shine in darkness.